Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to your episode of Monday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I'll give my humble opinion on them. To get the formalities out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for the is, I have an idea for a Blackbeard rework. Blackbeard is a shield operator, so what about making Blackbeard's gadget like Goyo, but on offense? He has two throwable gadgets like Alibi's Prisma. When it lands on the ground, it deploys a shield. Maybe change the shape of the shield so that it can differentiate between his gadget and the defender deployable shield. This will make Blackbeard an operator that has utility for his team and not a selfish one. That is a really cool idea, and I like it for a bunch of different reasons. The first one is that it fits Blackbeard thematically. He is an operator that is designed to lock down sections of the map. On the outside of the building, next to a window, anyone unlucky enough to get into his line of sight, because of that face shield protection, he is going to have a massive advantage. And so by removing that aspect of his gadget and giving him essentially deployable shields that he can place down everywhere, uh, that is now going to allow him different positions where he can fortify and lock it down for offense. The other reason why I love this is that it would remove one of the worst design gadgets I think that has ever been added into Rainbow Six Siege. This entire game revolves around headshots. Everyone knows that. Why would they ever think it'd be a good idea to introduce someone that is able to absorb essentially headshot damage? It doesn't make any sense. And so by eliminating that entirely, of course I'm going to be on board with that idea. The other reason why I like this idea so much is to allow for different tactics and strategies that just simply are not an option right now for the offensive team. One of the things that I love about Rainbow Six Siege is that you can use your creativity to fortify defense. You can open up different lines of sight with destruction. You can reinforce or not reinforce certain walls. You can place down deployable shields or use the different assortment of gadgets to your advantage. That really isn't anything that you can do on offense. Now, obviously, that's because of the dynamic between the two different sides, but hopefully kind of understand where I'm coming from. And so by introducing an operator that can essentially place down their own shields that they can use around the map, that would really allow for these different tactics. Imagine you're waiting for a roamer to make their way down a long hallway. Instead of just peeking the angle, you could place down a shield. That roamer is now probably going to be a lot more reluctant to go down said hallway. If you're trying to plant the diffuser, throw one of these things onto the objective. You can then use it as a forward position. Normally, there isn't any great thing to hide behind, but now you and your team on offense has something that they can use. You can either hide behind it to plant or just actually use it as a different line of sight to get an angle on the defensive team. The amount of ways that this would be changing up the game, I think, would be staggering. And it's for that very reason why I would love for Ubisoft to consider doing something like this. Now, with that said, though, and hopefully some of you have noticed some issues here, is that this could come with some problems. What do you do on defense? when he's placed two of these down and they're now planting directly behind it. You could use Nitro or the other utility available, but what if that's all gone? What if you've used all of those before? Are you basically out of luck? You now have to charge these two shields and just kind of hope for the best? Like, that sounds really frustrating. One way that Ubisoft could work around this is by just making it work the way that it does currently, where they have HP. So if you do enough damage, it probably need to be at least a significant amount, 800, 1,000 damage, whatever it is, eventually you can get on through. And so while it still will allow you this ultra defensive position, uh, you're not going to be able just to put this down and then have a free plant. Like that is something that they're probably going to want to avoid. That could be one way of solving that problem. The other issue I can think of is that if this works just like Alibi, how many times have you tried to place her gadget down and it gets locked up because of some random reason? There's like debris in the way, it was too close to a wall, and then it doesn't deploy. Now imagine that, but on a much larger scale, because this is a shield, it's going to be larger. How is this going to work? I, I could see it getting kind of frustrating to use where you only have a couple of them. You throw it in and then it gets stuck on a wall or something was in the way. And now that gadget is completely useless or unless you want to rush in and hopefully grab it before someone takes you out. Like, I don't know how they'd be able to make that work. 
In general, though, if you can't tell, I really like this idea. It would allow for more creativity and strategy on the offensive team. It would remove what I consider to be one of the worst gadgets in the game that never should have been introduced to begin with. And it would still allow for Blackbeard to have a similar playstyle for what he has today. Yes, there might be some issues here and there that Ubisoft would need to work out, but just overall, I think this could be a really cool way of changing up a problematic operator. The next question comes from Michael, and it is, I've been playing some Battlefield with friends lately. What do you think of Ubisoft adding some sort of suppression system to Siege? Something like what Battlefield had. I don't really know if that is a mechanic that I want to see added into Rainbow Six Siege. I understand why people like it, because it adds in a, a further layer of, of realism. If people are taking shots at you continuously around a corner, you're going to be very reluctant to peek your head around said corner. A ton of video games have this kind of a system, and honestly, if you think about it, Rainbow Six Siege already sort of does. When you take damage in this game, your screen distorts and has a fuzzing effect to it, making it harder to understand what's happening directly in front of you. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten taken out because I entered into a room, didn't know someone was in the corner, they take a shot at me, obviously I take some damage, and then I clearly have no idea where they are. I might have a general understanding of where the shots are coming from, but because of this distortion effect, I'm not able to get the flick precisely to where it needs to be, and then I promptly get taken out. And so the idea of expanding upon that even further where you just need to get shots next to someone because that's the way that worked in Battlefield. I don't really know if I'm on board with that. Now, I will give it to you that this would open up different types of strategies. If you know that someone is in the corner of a room, if you got something like an LMG, you can just rattle off in that general area. And not only are they going to be less likely to peek like they would normally right now because, well, there's a lot of shots happening, but now there is this distortion effect because they're near those shots. They're going to be at a significant disadvantage. If you're then working in tandem with someone else, you just rattle off those shots, keep that effect on their screen, your teammate rushes on in, and then is hopefully able to take advantage of the situation. I don't really know if that sits well with me. And so in general, while I understand why people like this in other video games because it adds in that further layer of immersion, I don't really think it has a place in Rainbow Six Siege. Not only that, but it rewards people for inaccuracy. Hey, congratulations, you missed your shot. Now that person who didn't realize you were there is gonna be at a worse state. They're gonna be at a disadvantage because of your inaccuracy. It's something I didn't really like in the Battlefield franchise. For me personally, I would like them to actually minimize the effect that we have right now by taking damage. I've never liked it. I, I've never enjoyed that kind of a system. I like clarity when I play video games, and so I don't think this is really for me, but that is just my two cents. The next question is, do you think since Ubisoft has added a range of different scopes, they should look to add alternate grips slash barrels? I've always felt that the attachments have lacked in variety. Honestly, this could be something that we could see in the future. Ubisoft talked about a while ago that they wanted there to be more of a meaningful decision when you were choosing your attachments, and that's not really what happens. Now, they could have been referring to the optics that they just introduced, and if that's the case, then they were right. There are so many more to choose from, and it's really going to come down to personal preference or how you want to play during the round, and I think that they hit it out of the park when it came to those optics. But are they going to be going further. I would argue that especially for the barrels and the, the grips and stuff like that, it's really you pick the attachment and then you just forget about it for the rest of the time that you play Rainbow Six Siege. There really isn't any more decision making there. The question is though, is that if they do go down that route, how do they go about it? Do, do they bring us more attachments that allow us to reload maybe faster, or you have more rounds to work with, but it's a slower reload when you finally do have to go through that animation? Do they improve or expand upon the different barrels? Do they separate them so that they are more distinct from what we have right now, so they allow for different play styles? It's going to be a lot harder than just giving us more optics. I could really easily see some of these becoming the preferred option that everyone chooses, because that's the desired stat and everyone gravitates towards it and that variety really isn't there anymore because they have a hard time balancing it out. That's one concern that I have. Overall, though, I would not be surprised if this eventually is something that we see added in Rainbow Six Siege, not only because of what they talked about, but also because they said that if you thought that this season was big, just wait until the next few. Like, they have a lot more in store. And so if this season being one of the biggest game changers that we've had in a while is just the beginning, 
what could that lead to? Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's episode of Monday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. We went a little bit more in depth, especially with that Blackbeard rework. And so give me your guys' thoughts. Do you like the suggestion? Do you think that that would make him underpowered, overpowered? Do you think that he should stay the way that he is? Hopefully not. But let me know your guys' thoughts down below. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy.